Boys and girls, young people, I'm always on your side. And right now, when all you hear on commercials is those three dreaded words, back to school, I always say, forget about that. Don't even think about that right now. You have, so because it seems like your summer vacation is hurtling toward a conclusion, you still got two weeks of freedom. Think about it, in the middle of February, if someone were to say to you, you know, we're just gonna give you two weeks off, you would be like, this is incredible. It's like a new lease on life, two weeks off. You've got two weeks off. What are you gonna do with that time? What fun things are you gonna do? Stay outside as much as you can. Let that sun hit you, the wind run through your hair. Families, maybe plan a, a spontaneous road trip. You know, pick something cool and go see it. And if you're gonna take a road trip, and I say this for the grown-ups too. Many of you are teachers, you work in education. For all of us, we should do one more wild, holy, but wild thing before the summer ends. And if you take a road trip, you're going to need a podcast. And this is really the secret of my success. This is how I stay in touch with all these things that I used to like a whole lot, like technology and computers and comic books and, and, and nerdy superhero movies when I just don't have time to do those things anymore. I just listen to the podcast when I'm in the car. My particular secret is SQPN, if you're interested in checking that out. A lot of people are doing the Bible in a Year podcast, and that's great. I stick with, it's called the StarQuest Production Network, sqpn.com. StarQuest is, uh, you know, the star over Bethlehem, and the three wise men were on a quest to find that star. That's how they got their name. StarQuest Production Network. Um, the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. There is no other podcast in the world like that. I love it. It's called The Secrets of Tech. They do The Secrets of Star Wars, movie reviews. They, uh, one of the guys, the dad, he has five kids, and he has a, his name is Dom Bettinelli. He's the CEO. They call him Bets. So he has a podcast called Raising the Bets about how he raises his kids. And so if you're a parent, you might find a lot of uh, insight and, and maybe just a common spirit in that podcast. The whole thing was founded by a Dutch priest, Father Roderick Van Hogen, who was one of the early pioneers in pod. When nobody knew what podcasts were, he was doing it from the Netherlands. And he speaks pretty good English, and I've listened to his podcast for a long time. He's moved on to other things now. But he tells a story that he was traveling once, and in Europe you travel a lot. You just hop on a train, you hop on a plane, you go to another country just for like a day. You know, everything's so close over there. And he said he, he got, and this was just when suspicion was starting to grow and security lines became longer and, you know, airplane travel is not what it used to be. And he walks through the line, he's wearing his Roman collar as he's traveling, and they pull him aside from the security line. Oh boy, you know, he, that's never a good sign, right? It's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you. Oh, Father, would you step aside, please, and come answer a few questions? And he goes over there, and, and the guy at the counter is, is looking at him. All right now, sir. How do I know for sure that you are actually what you claim to be? How do I know that you are a Roman Catholic priest? Uh, well, I mean, I showed you my ID, uh, yes, but, but I'd like you to answer a question. And Father Roderick says, I am never going to make my flight, am I? <laughs> well, the question that the man asked him at the counter is, what is the shortest verse in the entire Bible? If you're a priest, you should know that. He didn't know it. It's one of those random facts. Sometimes you hear it, sometimes you pick it up in seminary, sometimes you don't. And he thought, I'm a priest, I really ought to know this. And the guy at the counter looking at him sure thought that because he was kind of looking at him like, yeah, yeah, you're a priest, you don't know this, Father? Finally, the guy cracked a smile and he said, and Jesus wept. Three words, that's the shortest verse in the entire Bible. And that's a powerful thing, you know, that the, the Bible makes that statement as an entire verse that we could spend a whole day really meditating on the fact that Jesus wept, that God came down and took on our humanity. And he did it so much, he didn't just do it kind of waltzing through, like, oh, I'll take on a body, but like, I'm, I'm, there's no problem. He took on everything, the suffering of the world, our pain, our emotional distress. He was willing to carry that with us. I mean, how close is our God to us? Shortest verse in the Bible, and Jesus wept. I bring all of this up because we have, and here's some more random fast facts about the Bible, we have the shortest chapter in the Bible today as our responsorial psalm. It is Psalm 117. And you know there are uh, 
prayers where we have to pray as priests and religious uh, every day, the, the liturgy of the hours, and I love it. It's, it's three psalms and a reading from scripture and certain prayers and canticles, and it gives like a hinge to the day. Your day revolves around picking up that book and praying. But there's some days you really just don't have the time to do it. And you make the time, because made, we made promises at our ordination to do this. But once in a while, when you see Psalm 117 coming up in the book, you're like, oh good, this is gonna save me all kinds of time. The whole psalm, you heard it just a few minutes ago. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Steadfast is his kindness toward us. His love endures forever. Wow, that's a great prayer. You know, you could memorize a whole chapter of the Bible, those four lines, and repeat it. It's a great prayer to pray when you're just feeling like, you know, I'm, things are going well. I want to give God some glory. Memorize Psalm 117. Now you're all wondering, that's the shortest chapter in the Bible. What's the longest chapter in the Bible? Well, that comes from the Psalms also, and it's almost right next to it. Psalm 119 is the, is the longest chapter, and they don't put that one in the breviary all by itself. They break it up in little sections. You pray a daytime prayer, and it goes through the whole four weeks of the Psalter. It's called an acrostic psalm because there's one verse for every letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's a long psalm, Psalm 119. 117 is the short one, 119 is the long one, the shortest verse in the Bible, and Jesus wept. He wept, but he didn't give up. And that's the lesson of our readings today. Don't ever give up. The last will be first, the first will be last. So think about that too. We should never get too comfortable, right? I got this made, heaven's in the bags, no problem, I have nothing to worry about. Well, we should always be striving for greater holiness. To whom much has been given, much will be expected. I feel that as a priest more than anybody, let me tell you. You know, I, when your priests die, pray for them, because they're going to spend a lot of time in purgatory. You know, much has been given to us, much is expected to us, uh, of us. And we don't always get it right. So say prayers for our deceased priests and bishops. Some who are first will be last, and we gotta work hard so that we can trust that through our faith and our obedience, we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Some, the first will be last, and some who are last will be first. That's good news. You all have, and I do too, a long list of people that you're praying for who have left the church, right? Who have gone and are no longer practicing the sacraments. Don't ever give up on those people because God wants to save everybody and he's gonna give some opportunity for that person at some point in their life to come back, the open door. And a lot of them take it. Some don't, I would be lying if I, I, I don't, don't know that it works out well for everyone. Jesus says, you know, strive to enter the narrow gate. Many will attempt but not be strong enough to enter heaven. Isn't that an interesting way to say it? People tend to look at Catholics as, ah, those wimps, you know, they don't do anything fun. They don't sin like the rest of us, uh, weaklings. We're the strong ones, folks. We resist that stuff and you need to be strong. That's why the church makes us follow all these rules. You gotta be strong to get into heaven. You gotta have willpower. The people that just give in to every little impulse they have, they're not going to be strong enough. But conversion will be offered to everyone, especially those for whom we are praying. We pray that at that moment, they take it. I could tell you some great stories about spouses who prayed for their spouses who were away from the church for decades. And in the end, they came back. Why so long? Why does God make us wait? He knows when the time is right. He knows if he offers it right now, the person isn't going to take it, and he respects their free will. He waits until the time will be most effective, when the chances are the highest that the person will respond. Some who are last will be first. Hallelujah. Never give up. And I got to remind myself of that as vocation director every day, folks. Never give up. This church is in God's hands, and he's not going to let it fail. He promised us that. Do you know the verse in chapter, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18? Peter, on you the rock I build my church, right? We are Christ's church. He said that. We're the only church in the world that has God himself saying, you are mine. I have built you. And he says, the gates of the netherworld will not prevail against you. We have a promise from God himself as he walked in the flesh among us that we will never fail. 
And I, I don't want to say I remind him of that promise. He knows about it. But I call him on that promise all the time when I'm sitting in adoration and I say, Jesus, you told us to ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers. And as vocation director, I'm asking you, send more men. We need them for the priesthood. And he's answering the prayer. You know, I said three new men starting this year. One I'm going to accompany to Erie with his family. Today he's a young guy just out of high school. That's our undergrad program. You know Andy Erdman's heading to Baltimore. He's got one other guy going with him who lives in the, on the west side of Buffalo. You know, the guy going to Erie is from Wyoming County, just from all over the diocese. God picking and calling men. Who else is he calling who maybe hasn't heard it yet or maybe has heard it and hasn't responded yet? That's why I'm here. If you're feeling that tap on the shoulder, give my office a call. We'll help you to sort it out. Let us never give up. Uh, the first and the third and the gospel readings, they, they talk about God calling people you don't expect, right? Some of these, he says, I will take as priests and Levites. Oh yeah, Lord, do it. <laughs> take them as priests, call them forth. He's talking about the whole world. It would have been inconceivable for the Jewish people to think that as people come from the north, south, east, and west, all these people who aren't affiliated with the Jewish nation at all are going to come into the kingdom. I'll take some of them as priests. Really? You wouldn't have been able to understand that. God is doing incredible things, and he will keep this church going. Let us never give up. Folks, this is what the renewal is all about. Everybody's worried about the renewal because it's uncertain. We don't know what it's going to look like on the other side. But it's in God's hands and he's going to take care of it. And you know what's going to happen? Because I've gone, I go to different parishes all the time. It's my job as vocation director. I've been to St. Pius and preach there. I go to Pendleton when Father Dan's away on vacation and St. Augustine's out on Goodrich and I, I preach there. They're beautiful people just like you are. They love the Lord Jesus Christ. They love the Eucharist. They put up with an awful lot of flack from our culture and society that turns its nose up at us all the time. They're suffering for the faith just like you are. You're going to love them when we all come together and this thing unites. Look forward to making some great new friends when the renewal kicks in. I might talk about more about that in the future. All of it's in God's hands. He has got a future full of hope and joy for his church after all we've been through here in Buffalo. God will bring us to peace. Let us never give up. Would you stand with me as we pray?